Across this great nation, there is a culture of people who carry on a heritage. They have an intangible quality that can't be described, but it comes from deep within their hearts. They share an appreciation for the greatest things that come from Mother Earth. They watch over, understand, and care for the vast wilds of this great country. Fishing, hunting, and trapping are the foundations that Canada was built on. For over two centuries, we have taken to the woods and water to pursue wild game. Today, it's about conservation, preservation, and wildlife management. Whether you are a man or woman, fish or hunt, you should support sound wildlife management and proudly say, I am an angler and hunter. The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. It's just awesome being out in the woods. The traditional Canadian deer camp can be defined in many different ways. I wouldn't miss this for the world. In fact, go check out Google Images and type in deer camp. A plethora of various pictures will pop up. From tents and tarps to trailers and tar paper shacks. I'm sure if you're a deer hunter, you can relate to any of the images I just mentioned. I'm pretty lucky myself. The deer camp I'm part of is an early 1900s farmhouse and is pretty well equipped. Four walls, a roof, a wood stove, and it sleeps five or six comfortably. Albeit there's no running water and the bathroom is a trusty outhouse on the hill. Overall, it's a great place to spend a week in the woods. However, with a few members of our camp, including myself, having kids that want to partake in the hunt means things are going to get pretty crowded. And a renovation or expansion of some sort is the only way you're going to get more hunters into the camp. Or is it? One day I was driving down the highway and I noticed a collection of sheds and outbuildings for sale. These were no ordinary sheds. It would make an awesome bunkhouse for the deer camp. All of these buildings can be designed to customers likings or if a customer is in more of a rush to get a building they can be purchased off the lot we have custom-made trailers that are specifically made for delivering our buildings that can fit into spaces with an extra foot of space on each side of the building so that tail side shift will actually enable them to get the building within inches of the uh, customer's required final resting place We also have shed delivery mules, which allows the truck drivers to drop the building on the ground, pick it up with the shed mule, and actually maneuver into even tighter spaces. So anybody that has a, a lot that has an additional foot up to 16 feet wide, we can deliver a building that's 14 wide in that space. Now, for those people that don't have that space, we do also offer build on site as an option. And we also have uh, lifetime warranties on all of our products with a huge back end staff that any issue whatsoever, uh, we will take care of and it's always going to be fixed. So this here, this is more like one of our medium sized buildings. Um, it's at a 12 wide, 16 feet long. It's a very standard building for people to use as a bunky or a small cottage storage unit. As you can see the, uh, the construction, so everything is 16 inch on center, uh, double top plate, so we fall above uh, standards for Ontario Building Code. Our snow loads are the best in industry. Uh, you don't have to worry about this building, it's not going anywhere for a very long time. Although the company did originate in the U.S., uh, our home base in Canada now uses lumber products and that, that all come from Canada. So we are very proud to be Canadian built, Canadian lumber going into our products, and uh, you know it's craftsmanship that you can trust. Mere weeks before the opening of deer season, we had a 12 by 16 bunkhouse delivered, dropped and leveled, ready to accommodate any additional hunters we might add. And it's a great place to kick back, play some cards, or just relax and share stories of the hunt. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. <laughs> 
deer camp life can be pretty thrilling. Here, monkey. And being able to bring along my daughter, August, made this trip a special one. August was going to spend the first couple days in camp to get her feet wet and hopefully inspire her to want to join the crew when she's a little older. Hey, August. Say something. She bats her eyes. It's a cold morning. It's the first morning of the uh, rifle season for deer. And August has joined all the guys at the hunt camp. And there's been lots of action. Mostly does, though. But we have seen a couple spike horns. And one spike horn who is just legal. We think if he comes, we're going to get him right. Wow. Binoculars make watching the Blue Jays so much more fun. <laughs> See all the way out into the marsh. You hear that? Two shots. It was really close. We just heard two shots really close to us. One and then about a count of three. And then another shot really close and beat. And oh, he's probably about. As the crow flies, he's not far, but on the ATV, he's probably about a kilometer away. But he's, he's not far, he's on the next ridge. My phone just buzzed. Getting a message that one of the group got a deer down is always exciting. Buck down. So there we go, opening morning, we got one deer down, kid. So we're going to sit for about 15 minutes, and then we'll pack up. Then we'll go find Pete and see what he got. Awesome. First day. So August and I rushed over to see Pete's deer and give him a hand. Here, come on. We'll check out Pete's deer. We'll beat him to it. Yeah. So August and I drove over here. We got on the bike. And Pete's got a spiker. See him in there? Nice deer. Especially for a First thing opening day. Yeah, I. Congrats. Hey, pal. <laughs> nice work. Wow, eh? That's a good little deer. Yeah. It's always a bonus seeing deer, and when one is actually harvested, it's as good as any reason to celebrate. That's awesome, eh? First morning. With the deer hanging and just one more sit for August, we made the most of our time in the blind. Are you comfortable? Definitely see one. It's a blue jay. Dear, dear, dear. And of course, not having a doe tag meant watching this deer work its way right past our stand. Oh, I see. All right, let's go. I'm turning the camera off. We packed up and headed home. With August back in school, I was going to return Wednesday and hunt the rest of the week. And of course, while I was away, my big brother decided to spend an afternoon in my barn. And oh, what an afternoon he had. Oh, I shoot lots of deer. I usually wait about 15 years between shooting, so yeah. I like to let leave some for the other guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Min Kota and Humminbird. The hanging shed at our camp is decorated with antlers from hunts over the past 30 years. And this year, my brother Grant finally had his chance to hang a big deer in there. Hey, I'm just happy to be uh, here, shoot a deer once in a while. It's perfect. It's a big deer. It is a good sized deer. Yeah. It's a good symmetrical eight pointer. Good looking deer. So uh, Mike had to leave and take August down to gymnastics, I guess. And uh, I took advantage of the opportunity to try out his blind. 
Yeah, I was, I was actually watching it, though, and sent him a text, and then uh, he said, well, you know, you better, you better wait and see what happens because we, don't know, we only have one dough tag. So, uh, so I sat and watched the dough. And then, uh, sure enough, uh, 10 minutes later or so, a buck came in, followed the trail right in behind her, and um, I didn't even really have time to think about what to do. He stopped, and um, I just put the scope on him, made the shot. And then uh, he ran off to the right, did a bit of a circle back down into a, a gully, and I lost sight of him, but I was pretty sure I made a good shot. So I waited about uh, 20 minutes until the trembling stopped. <laughs> uh, uh, texted my brother and asked him what I should do. <laughs> I needed some advice. So, uh, so I got down, went down, and I immediately saw the blood trail. Yep. Here we go. I see, I see it. Oh my God, there he is. Grant! Located it, made sure it was down, and then uh, called in the, the guys back at the camp to come and help me uh, tag it. Oh my God. My gun's unloaded. Look at that. Look at the rack on that. <laughs> oh, baby. Well, the last year I shot was about 10 That's years ago. It was a small... I think it was a small buck that year. It was antlerless anyway. And um, that was my first year. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna start shooting deer every year now. And uh, it's been a while. <laughs> so, uh, so this one was a long time coming, but it was yeah, worth it. Great big eight pointer. He came right in behind that doe. Oh, wow. Didn't even look up. The perfect scenario. Oh, it was actually. <laughs> I think it might be a little bit bigger than the one my brother shot a couple years ago too, but... Uh. This is what it's all about right here. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pointer. And nice, high, symmetrical. <sighs> we haven't been skunked in a while, but uh, a couple years back in particular, there's four deer on this pole, all pretty similar to this guy right here. So uh, it was a little sagging in the middle, you know, not bad, but it held up, so... That's the goal this year to try and, uh, you know, try and at least reproduce what we did a few years ago. We've got some uh, uh, evidence of the past deer up here. Probably not quite as big as this guy though, you know. So uh, for a first time hunter, you have to take advantage of your opportunities. Uh, but I've seen lots of deer here that I haven't shot, small does and fawns and even small bucks, but I wasn't letting that one go. So uh, my philosophy is to just uh, take a good deer and not just shoot the first deer that shows up. What a fantastic experience for my brother. His first monster buck and out of my stand of all places. All right, Let's get to up. work. Okay. I couldn't be happier for him. And with that big eight pointer out of the way, I could focus on tagging that spike horn that August and I were looking for. The Hunting Edge is brought to you by Browning Ammunition. To get the edge over the deer, I got in and out of the woods on my Yamaha Kodiak 450. I used a pair of Burris Drop Tine 10x42 binoculars, Browning's X-Bolt in a 270 WSM loaded with Browning's BXR 134 Whitetail Ammo with a Burris Drop Tine 4.5 to 14 42 mil scope. Finally, Camillus knives made for easy field dressing of all our deer. Deer hunting in the hardwoods of Northern Ontario is a bit more challenging than hunting in the open fields and fence lines in the south. Personally, I like to have my rifle sighted in by professionals. It's inexpensive and can be done any time of year. How are you, Kev? Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Good. What do you got today? I need to sight in my deer rifle. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. We got the range back there. We can take her back there and get her dialed right in for you. Perfect. My deer rifle is a Browning X Bolt 270 Winchester short mag, and it's matched with a Burris Drop Time 4.5 to 14 magnification scope. 
I simply bring in the ammo I'm going to be using, and they do the rest. Basically, what I want to do is I want to show people that, you know, when I come down to Gagnon's, I basically hand my firearm over to you, you take it back into the range and sight it in, hand it back to me, and I know it's dead on where I've asked you to put it. Sure. Yeah, so what happens is, is we get a lot of people come in and they buy a new rifle or uh, they brought their rifle in and they're purchasing a scope or, or they just bring in, I've inherited this and I want to make sure it's dialed in. Um, and we take that, we get the, they purchase their ammo. We bring it back here in the range. Uh, we set it on a, on a rest so that it's basically locked down. Uh, we have laser sighters, so everything is like top notch. We laser dial it in first to get us on paper. And then we're usually pretty good and hopefully we can show it that within two to three shots we can have uh, wherever that person wants it, whether it be uh, an inch high at 50 or dead on at 50 or dead on at 25. But um, yeah, it saves a lot of time for people. It saves a lot of money in ammo. Yeah. Um, yes, you're paying for the site in, but you're probably going to save at least half of that in the price of ammo because we all know the price of ammo nowadays keeps going up. So wasting shells is, uh, is costly. So. so he's got three shots on that paper. He's moved the target back to 50 yards. And right now, we're going to set this up so it's about an inch high at 50 yards, which will put me high at 100 and zero at 200. You can feel that in here. <laughs> so Mike, if you remember, this was our first shot after right. it was bore sighted laser at 25. That was our second and third shot. We were quite comfortable with that. And then we wanted to get a feel for it at 50, so we moved it out. Right, our first shot, we dialed it in a little bit, same spot basically. I did a small adjustment again, and then we wanted to be high, about an inch high at 50, so we, we pulled her up again, and we're comfortable with that. That browning shoots well. And now when I'm in my stand, I know regardless of where a deer comes out, I will confidently be able to make an effective shot. It's always great when you get to harvest a deer. I think he's down. The only thing that would have made this better was if August had been here. That would have been blood. A chunky soul. For blood to be spraying like that, he's hit good. There's some blood running, dripping here. Yes, there he is. It's just laying here. It's just, just right here. It's a real yearling spike horn. Yeah. Yep, just a 
perfect length right there. We'll put the measuring tape on it and make sure, but uh, that's definitely a legal deer. Three fingers is three inches, and there's some left over. Thank you for coming out. It's incredible. I'll get to get unpacked, get my, go get my bag and my tag, and uh, put the Camillus to work. What an awesome deer season this turned out to be. Harvesting a few deer, having some new additions take part in camp, and of course, plenty of laughs. <laughs> That's what deer camp's all about. <laughs> Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffolk's Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Excalibur Crossbows, and Yukon Gear. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.